Hey, I'm Robert. Welcome back to Ratchet Builds. Today we'll be performing some much needed repairs and upgrades to my Ender 3 Pro, which I've owned for a few years now. It's one of my primary 3D printers, and I've made a few upgrades to this printer over the years. Several of my projects are on hold right now because it requires some custom 3D printed parts to complete. So the main focus is get this printer back up and functioning with this new SKR Mini E3 V3 mainboard and ensure all the functions are working correctly. One of the issues I've had in the past is making sure my nozzle is centered to my bed because I use a different bed size than the stock. And additionally, I gotta dial in the movements of my hot end because I use a micro Swiss all metal hot end that has added extra weight to the top. But we're gonna talk about more of that in a future video. Today will be the second time of me actually installing this V3 mainboard into this printer. My first mainboard had some issues with the MOSFETs that kept the heated bed running all the time, even when commanding it in cool down mode. We also have to change the wiring on the cooling fan, but we'll talk more on that later. So the first thing we need to do is actually expose the area where the main board lives in this machine. So I'm just gonna set my machine up like this, so that way I have access to it, and so that way y'all can easily see. So right here is our main board area. We can see the mounting holes. Mine's already been removed because of the one that I had to send off for warranty. So that's the reason all my wires are just kind of hanging out here. Now, your Ender 3 may be a little bit different with this mounting mechanism. I only have about three bolts that take off this nice little cover that has the fan on the bottom. Some Enders do have the fan on the top. So your mileage may vary on trying to do this swap yourself, but it's the basic idea. Next, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and find my pin out for my new main board here. And then that way, whenever I'm hooking up my wires to the system, I know where everything goes and the proper order to put it in, because you have to make sure that you're putting your positive and negative connections in the proper position. So here's my main board. And then I'm gonna show a diagram of the pin out that I'm gonna be using for this main board here. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and get my power wires and my heated bed wires installed because it's got these pinch style connectors on it. Instead of just a simple plug, it's, it's easier to do while it's unmounted than whenever it's actually in the machine, you got a little bit more room to work with. And that's, that way I can make sure I have a good connection on there as well. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. So now that we've got our main power in, We've got our heated bed wired up and our hot end wired up. We're gonna go ahead and get this installed back into our container here. And we've got four mounting holes, one, two, three, four. And then we've got four in the box as well. So let's go ahead and get this mounted in there. Then we'll work on trying to get the rest of these plugs all installed. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and make sure I've gotten my right driver bit, which the screwdriver from LTT store does have the bit that is perfect for working on these 3D printers. It's like they have a few that they had to work on in their own office. And set this back in here. It's gonna be somewhat of a challenge with all the wires. I've got it all lined up. I have access to my micro USB slot and my SD card reader. So I'm gonna go ahead and start just one of these bolts. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down. I'm just gonna snug it in place first. So with our new board all bolted in, one thing that's going to be different on your old board versus your new one is going to be your connector going to one of your cooling fans. It no longer takes one of the pinch connectors and you're going to need one of these little plug-in connectors. Luckily I had a spares laying around so I soldered mine in with some heat shrink and matched up my co color coding to make sure I had my positive and negative in the right position. So now it's going to be easier just to plug into the board. Next, I'm going to use my diagram that I had pulled up. That way I can make sure all my wires are getting plugged into the proper place. And we'll get this all tidied up and do our first power on with the new board. So double checking from where I had things plugged in on my old main board, which it was the Mini 3 V2. And where the new position on some of the wires are on this V3 board. I finally got everything all plugged up. The last thing I've got to plug up is my cooling fan that is mounted at the bottom. And beginning of the video, I think I said I only had three screws. I forgot about the top one here, which would be my fourth. So mine does have four screws. And next thing I want to do is make sure none of my wires are touching my cooling fan, which I've got some that are trying to poke into it. I've already checked my fan to make sure that it was spinning freely. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my first couple of screws here. 
just to keep it in place. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way down yet. I'm just gonna snug them up. First thing we're gonna have to do is go ahead and compile some firmware. Let me switch over to the computer and I'm gonna lead y'all through that. All right guys, we're back at the PC. First thing we need to do is go to our Marlin firmware. It's at the Marlin GitHub up here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and make sure we're on bug fix 2.1 and we're gonna download that zip file. I've already downloaded mine. We're gonna scroll down here because our configurations used to be in that master folder up there, but they've actually made a separate GitHub. So we gotta scroll down to these example configurations or click this link. Now, this is the most important part that I've noticed recently. This import 2.1 does not work for building on Marlin. You have to make sure you go down here to the bug fix one, click it, and then we can go over here and download the zip file. Uh, I download my zip files right to my desktop, so that way I have the shortest path for the program. So we're just going to go ahead and exit out of this. As you can see, there's my zip files here. I've already extracted my zip files into these other folders. The next step is going to go into our configuration folder here. And we're gonna find our configuration file for the printer that you're using. I'm using an Ender 3 Pro. So I'm gonna scroll down here to Creality. I'm gonna find my Ender 3 Pro. I'm gonna find the main board that I'm using, which is this Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version three. Double click that. And then right here, all I'm gonna do is just right click and cut all this. And then I will come over to my Marlin build folder. We're gonna go in here, Marlin bug fix. Scroll down here to Marlin itself. And if we see in this folder, we've got some of the same files. All you do is right click, hit paste. I've already got mine done. And if it asks you to override, yes, you want to override the existing files that are there because you're the files that you're copying to it are already preset files for your printer. So mine's already been done, so we can exit out of this. I am going to link some videos in the description below for setting up Visual Studio. Teaching Tech does a great video on this. He'll teach you on how to do the platform IO and also this auto Marlin build, which is important. But if you've already got that installed, the next thing is, is to go over here to open a folder. I'm going to navigate to my desktop here where I've got my folders, my Marlin bug fix, Marlin bug fix, and I'm just going to select folder. So it's going to pull you up, all your stuff up top. And right here, if I click on my configuration H, this is, oops, I'm already at the bottom. This is going to be your firmware for your printer. To tell it the instructions on how to function I've already edited mine myself a little bit I may make a video about this in the future as I've alluded to before then we have also got our configuration advance which is also in here now the only time you should have to edit this from my experience recently is if you have a modified printer if you've got a stock printer the next step here is just simply come down here to this check mark for the platform IO build Click it, and you'll see right here at the bottom, it's going to start compiling our firmware. So I'm gonna let it go through that and compile real quick, and then we'll show you how to get to the firmware itself. So our firmware successfully built. If you've got any error messages down here, you may have to go in there and do some edits. Mine went through perfectly fine, so we're gonna go ahead and navigate to where that firmware is stored. So that's going to be back in your Marlin build folder here. Open it back up and we're going to go to the PIO and then we're going to go to build. The build folder that we have, this is uh, the STM, I'm not going to read all that, <laughs> but you can see the code there. We're going to go into here and then right down here you'll see firmware.bin. So you're just going to right click cut. And then at this point, you should already have your SD card in there or either install your SD card. Mine is in drive G. You just right click and paste it here. 
So now we'll take the SD card out and we're going to put it into printer and upload our firmware. When the firmware gets done installing, you should have a folder similar to this one here that will just say firmware and you will lose the dot bin. That means that it was successfully installed on your printer. This is firmware that I've already installed in mine. I just want to show that as an example here. So right now you should only have this firmware dot bin in your system. So let's go ahead and pull this SD card out and put it in our machine and upload the firmware and get through our first print. All right, so now that we got our firmware on our SD card, we're just gonna install it into our machine here. We're gonna power it on. So whenever you first power it on while doing the firmware, it may take a second before it says that the printer is attached. Now that my firmware is loaded, I can pull my SD card out. I'm gonna turn my machine back off. I've always liked to do a reset afterwards. Now it's gonna show me that everything is connected on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a homing sequence first, just, just to make sure all my axes are set up. So I wanna actually pull my board forward just a little bit so that way I can make sure that it actually homes like it's supposed to. So my bed just moved back and everything has homed where it needs to. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go look at my temperatures and make sure my temperatures aren't rising because that's where I first had my issue with my main board is I saw my bed temperatures hit 60, 70 C and then into the hundreds and then 200s. And I noticed I had an issue. I tried to running a cool down sequence. I even checked my wiring because I thought I had done it backwards, but it wound up just being a bad board. This one is actually holding at the low end temperature of what my room is. So I know it seems like it's working at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a preheat just to make sure it raises up and stops where I tell it to. So I'm gonna wait for it to do that and we'll be right back. All right, now that our printer is done heating, I've already done checked. My bed is all the way up to 70 C right where I set it. My hot end is about 215 C where I set it. All my X and Y axes and Z axis are working like they're supposed to. So this printer is set up as far as the base settings. I'm gonna go ahead and do a base 3D print with a Benchy. And from there, as we change settings, we'll be able to see the differences from the base setup of just the basic firmware to the custom firmware that we'll build in a future video for this machine. And hopefully it will give you an idea how to also change the firmware on your own machine to make it yours. So if y'all like this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment down below and on the next video, I'll see you here.